Sergio Ramos, he's here in Matias, uh, we are from Status, and today we are going to talk about uh, building reactive apps. So, to talk a little about this, we, we need to give some context. Uh, we are currently working on a, on a DApp called the Teller Network, which is a decentralized P2P um, fiat to crypto gateway, where users can interact with each other and buy and sell their crypto. And during the development of this DApp, we faced some challenge, being the main challenge, accessing smart contract data. Um, namely, in the terms of tracking uh, smart contract events and performing event sourcing. So, uh, here are some screens where uh, we can see the, the, the areas where we need to do uh, some data tracking. For example, in this screen, we need to uh, to retrieve all the active and past traits for a specific user and filter them. Um, well, uh, um, and this ends up uh, giving us some, some problems, specifically to seeking the smart contract uh, events and uh, as well as try to retrieve all the data in case the user refreshes the, the page and maybe we can have some lack of reactiveness and need to refresh the data as well as it is hard to um, it's hard to do simple queries because uh, sometimes we're not using existing data and we need to retrieve the data all over again so we came up with a with a simple solution which is subspace an MPA package that is already available um, this is a, a JavaScript library that lets the, the app developers uh, be able to track events, uh, variables, uh, functions, and balances. Uh, it will synchronize all this data uh, into a local database and also resume the loading of the contract events. Uh, that means that if the user refreshes the, the app, it will not start from scratch. It will start from the last, contract, from the last event that it has synchronized. And it also is built around uh, RxJS observables, meaning that you can have a reactive programming. Right. So to, to use subspace, so first we need to require the library, and then we initialize it, giving it a battery uh, provider. Uh, and, and we need to initialize, it's very important to initialize because it makes sure to uh, start the database, sync while it needs to, to, to be synced before starting. Now, if we want to, to track events, uh, first thing to do is that we need to start to initialize a new contract. So there's two ways to do this. You can either pass it the Web3 contract uh, instance or pass it the API address. And what it will create, it will still be a Web3 contract, but you will have some extra, extra things. Uh, Namely, that it will have the, it will have a new method called uh, track, and this met method you it will tell the subspace exactly what to tr what to track. Uh, you can also pass it some there's some filtering options. Uh, for, for instance, in this case, we want to track ratings, but only for a particular buyer, buyer, and it will return uh, an observable. Then this observable it will be a RX GS observable. You can use all the operators uh, available, you can create your own op operators. And in this case, we, uh, we, we pass an average operator, and then whatever a rating uh, is done, uh, the subscriber will, will be triggered with the latest average for, for those ratings. And again, it's, it's important to emphasize that uh, if you use this in a DAP and you, you know, refresh the DAP, it's not going to sync all over again, it's going to stay from the last known uh, location, which uh, it's, it's much easier uh, uh, this way. And you can track the properties, uh, so, uh, so usually we do dot .call, uh, if you want to use it as a, which you can still do, uh, because it's the same uh, API, but uh, you can do dot .track and it will again return the observable. And you can do the same thing with balances, so you can uh, you can track the uh, ads balance or ERC20 token balance, and it, this is uh, framework agnostic, so you can use with a, a framework du jour, uh, be it React or Angular or or whatever uh, framework. 
So, uh, so we are uh, here's just an example with uh, React. Uh, so you could use this. Uh, I want to fast. You can use this with Redux or without Redux. It's not you are forced for any particular solution. So in this case, uh, we provide a, a, a wrapper uh, to to help out, and you can use this wrapper to uh, wrap the a React component. And what this will do is that it will make the React component component recognize the properties that are uh, observables, automatically subscribe to them. So whenever there's uh, something new, it automatically refreshes the, the component. And, and then to use this, again, you initialize the substance contract. And again, this is a very simple example here. Uh, we we, we want to track uh, the rating event. And we're just passing a pipe with uh, the min and the maximum uh, for, for the rating. And yeah, so that we also support integration with GraphQL. Uh, we only have to define the resolver, and with this resolver, you need to pass a subspace observable. And after creating the schema, uh, you can uh, start using the GraphQL queries to obtain a specific data. And the good thing about using subspace is that each time a new event is generated, the query will be updated automatically, and you will receive uh, the latest data. And so here are some useful links in case you want to learn more about subspace. Uh, there is also the documentation where you can find examples of integration with different frameworks. So thank you for your attention.